Last year I made a video teaching how to make a repeat seamless pattern in Procreate on the iPad Pro, and it was really well received. So I thought, let's do a part two, but this time we're gonna make our patterns into brushes. Hey all I'm Brad of Brave the Woods, a digital art channel where I share awesome tips, reviews, and tutorials to creatives just like you. Before we jump into making our pattern brushes, if you haven't already, go check out the link right above. There's an episode where I teach you how to make a repeat seamless pattern in Procreate. Otherwise, when we get started, you might be confused at how we got to the point we're at. Following the instructions from my other video, I made a quick space-themed seamless pattern block here. And you'll notice that I didn't add any color. That's because the biggest limitation in turning these patterns into brushes is that it can only be one color. But I did find a workaround. We can add more colors. You just have to have multiple brushes and then layer them. So let's see how we do that. Lucky for us, the hardest part is out of the way. We've already done the artwork. Now we just need to make it into a pattern brush, which is actually pretty easy. If you tap on the left-hand side, top left-hand side is the Actions tab, and you'll see there's a bunch of other tabs in there. Go to Add, and go down to the bottom where it says Copy Canvas. Now we just copied our image, and we're gonna paste it in a new brush. Under Brush Library, you'll see in the top right-hand corner is a little plus sign and it opens up the Brush Studio, which is making a custom brush, which is really, really awesome. If you haven't played much around in here, it's a little overwhelming at first, so you just kind of follow along here, um, but you'll soon realize that it's a very, very powerful function here in Procreate and uh, really fun to customize your own brushes. Okay, on the left-hand side is the Grain tab, and this is where we're gonna paste our uh, pattern. So let's go ahead and tap on Edit, and then Import, and go down to Paste. And there you have it, you see your pattern. Easy peasy, <laughs> really, really simple. But the problem is, is it's only gonna start coloring in the white part and the black part's not gonna be shown. So we need to invert this. Um, all you have to do is take two fingers and tap on your image and it inverts the image. Now we're ready to go. Let's go ahead and hit done here in the top right. I'm gonna go to this drawing pad and do clear drawing pad and let's start drawing and see what we did. Dude, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Now, if I pick up the pen and I try doing this again, now we actually have some problems. <laughs> the problem is, is it's overlapping and it's not lining up properly. So what we need to do is actually go just still here in the grain section, and then there's a little button here that's turned on. It says offset jitter. We need to turn that off. And as soon as we do that, let's clear our drawing pad. We'll go ahead and draw a little bit. This is just where you can demo your brush. And then we'll go over it again. And there we go, it's all lined up. Now we're still not quite finished. There's a few more little settings in here that we need to tweak and alter so that we uh, we have that very, very crisp pattern. We don't want any like wet edges or anything like that. So I'm gonna go down to rendering and I'm gonna go to light glaze. Uh, let's go down to our wet mix and take down the charge all the way to zero. Basically, like I said, I just want this to be super, super crisp. And then on Dynamics, let's see, Apple Pencil. Yep, and then on Apple Pencil, I wanna go ahead and turn this thing all the way down on my tilt. I don't need my Apple Pencil to be responsive here. I just want it to fill in a solid field of pattern. Uh, and then my opacity, I can go ahead and drop that all the way down because I'm not messing with pressure, like I said. Um, and I think that's it. Let's go ahead and hit Done. But there you have it, you made your pattern brush. Let's go ahead and test it out here in our, uh, in our file. Now we're gonna go ahead and kind of paint it on and you can change colors, of course. It doesn't have to be black. And it works. How cool is that? Okay, now one thing I'm noticing is that the pattern is super tiny. <laughs> so let's go ahead and make a few changes here to our brush. You can always just tap on your brush and go ahead and alter it again. Uh, let's go back to our grain and let's go to the scale. And we can slide that up and make that really big if we want. Oh, also, if you want to change the name, go ahead and tap here on the top and we can change the name of our brush. I think I'm going to name this brush Space Scene. There we go. Hit done, done. There we go. Now I'm going to just clear this layer or delete this layer. Could have just cleared it, whatever. <laughs> and now I'm gonna go ahead and draw and you'll see that the scale is a whole lot larger. And that may be just what you want. I can even just increase my brush size and start filling it in. Isn't that pretty awesome? 
As cool as this is, I did promise you a way to make your pattern have multiple colors. I did say it also had to be in multiple brushes. So let's make another brush for the colors. I'm gonna delete this layer right here and just open up my original drawing here. Now I can go ahead, add another layer, put it underneath and whatever color I choose right here doesn't really matter because uh, when we make it into a brush, it has to be black anyways and then we can change the color once it's a brush. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and start coloring in some of the areas that I would like to have color. So let's say I want these little areas to have color. We'll add a little blue right there. And some of these other areas too, the quicker way to do this than just to kind of draw it in would be just to drag and drop the colors. And the way that I, I do it, and it's a little shortcut, is you just tap on your layer that you want to be the reference layer. Tap on reference. And now when I go ahead and tap on my color, oops, it made it into another color. Once I tap on the color and drag it, I can just drop it into any enclosed outline shape and it will go ahead and fill it for me. It's pretty cool, it's a nice little trick. So that way you can kind of go through here and do this a lot quicker if you want. Let's do that. Maybe this little ring here on Saturn. Uh, these ones might be a little trickier if I'm gonna go over here because they obviously they're going overlapping on all the corners. So you have to make sure that the color continues down on all of those. And it might get a little tricky <laughs> to know. So if you want, you can just go ahead and um, either drop, drop in colors like this really quickly, uh, or you can just go ahead and manually just draw them in, especially if you're gonna do something like, hold on, let me, let me do that real quick. Let me finish this little corner. And this little guy right here. Okay, so now I did all the four corners. Now let's just say I wanted to add maybe some other, like little, let's do a star or a little star here. Let's do that. There we are, we'll do another one over here. Maybe we have like a, I don't know, we can add another. Is that a marker? <laughs> Trying to think of some other things that we can do. Ooh, maybe we do like little, just fun little shapes that aren't enclosed in that, in the outlines. Just for kicks. Just to kind of check it out. Okay, and then we'll do a few little dots here and there. Maybe we'll fill in this one right here. All right, there we go. So maybe this is the color you want to do, and maybe you can you can do the outline another color, but this is gonna be our new brush. So let's go ahead and toggle that off so we don't see it. And then now we have this little brush right here. Tap on it, alpha lock, and we'll go to black. And we're just gonna fill that. Tap on the layer again, go to fill layer, because we want that to be black. All right, so we're gonna go to copy canvas. And now all we have to do is go to our brush library. Where were we? My, I think I had it under imported. Imported, there we go. We have the space scene. We gotta copy this brush exactly. So just go ahead and slide it to the left and then you can duplicate it. There we are, now let's tap on it and edit it. We just need to edit the grain, that's it. The reason why we're duplicating is because we want everything to stay perfectly in line and all the settings exactly the same. So we gotta tap on edit for the grain, import, paste, there we are. Okay, we got the new shapes in there, the new color shapes. Hit done, hit done again. And now we're gonna go ahead and turn that off and let's see if we did it. First, let's go ahead and draw our outline right here. Perfect. Let's try to go faster, there we go. Okay, cool. Now, let's go underneath it. Let's change our color to that blue, huh? Blue's good. Okay, and now we're gonna change our brush to the space scene one. Well, I guess we can, we'll change the name of that. And then we start coloring it in. And look at that. It perfectly lines up with our other existing brush. And as long as you don't change the settings on the other brush, it'll always line up perfectly. And you'll notice here actually, there's like this little bit right here that I didn't get. And now I'll have to go back and I can fix that up. But look at that. Now you have two colors and you can add as many colors as you want. You just have to color them in separately on different layers and uh, you can get the uh, full effect of a colored pattern, which is really, really cool. And I didn't know this existed. So after doing a little bit of research, I figured this out and I guarantee you I'm gonna be using this quite a bit.
All right, so here's a pro tip for scaling brushes in Procreate. Now there's this weird little bug where the slider isn't very accurate, so things won't line up, especially if you're layering them. So let me show you what I mean. Right now we have two layers, right? We have the color layer underneath the outline, and it lines up perfectly because we just duplicated that brush when we made the color version. So of course it'll work just perfect. Now what happens if we want to alter the size of the original one? Let's see, let me clear this real quick. And let's take a look at our brushes. Okay, I'm gonna go to that first brush, the outline version. And let's say I wanna drive the scale up to about 50, 55. There we are. Okay, I'm gonna go to black. Find a layer right there, okay. So I'm gonna color that in right there or draw it out or whatever you wanna call it. Okay, now we're gonna go underneath it and use the other brush right here, but of course it's not right, so we have to go to 55. So 55 and you'd think that would have been perfect, but it's nowhere near perfect. Now it's got this cool little offset look, if that's what you're going for, that's pretty sweet. Um, but what's frustrating is that you had them both set to 55, um, but it doesn't match up still. That's because the slider is very inaccurate and you just have to not trust the slider. So what you do instead is you go to your brushes and you have to do this on both of them. Don't just do it on one. It will still not work if you don't do it on both. You have to manually type in 55%. There you go. This is for being perfectly accurate. It's not as important if you're just doing a single color one brush and not layering them. Uh, but for this, it's really important so that those line up perfectly. All right, so let's clear this one. We'll draw it again. Now it's much larger. I'm gonna add the blue layer underneath. And let's see if we lined up this time. Look at that, perfectly lined up because we went ahead and just used the manual approach. We typed in the number manually. Not sure why it does that, but uh, I just wanna save you the headache of trying to figure out why those don't line up. Um, so yeah, just enter them manually and you won't have any issue. Well, hopefully that helped. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if there's anything else you would like to learn in the Procreate app, please just let me know in the comments below. That'll give me ideas for future episodes. And as always, if you enjoyed this episode, please drop it a like and consider subscribing to the channel so you never miss an episode. All right, we'll see you guys next time.